At 5.30 a.m. on December 4, 2003, an employee of a well drilling company in Denver, Pennsylvania noticed a car parked partway into a creek. Assuming it was a drunk driver, the man went to investigate. The four-door silver Honda Accord with Maryland license plates, lights were off, but the engine was still running. Blood was smeared over the driver's door and the front left of the car. A large pool of blood was also found on the floor of the back seat and around $200 was scattered around inside the car. Police were called to the scene and discovered a man wearing a suit, tie and overcoat lying face down in the creek. He had an ID badge around his neck and wallet in his pocket. The man was quickly identified as 38-year-old Jonathan Luna, a father of two who worked as an assistant US attorney in Baltimore. Luna had been stabbed 36 times, mostly to his chest and neck, for authorities described many of the wounds as shallow, which are known as hesitation wounds. There are injuries inflicted to his genital area, and he also had a wound to his head, which he may have suffered when he landed in the creek. The Lancaster County Coroner determined Luna had died from stab wounds and drowning, and ruled it as a homicide. During his career, Luna had prosecuted drug dealers, armed robbers, and child molesters. This made him a potential target, his friends and family believed. Investigators looked into cases Luna had been involved with in the last few years, but came up with no promising leads or suspects. Despite two different coroners ruling the death of Jonathan Luna, a homicide, the FBI would reveal that they believed it was a suicide. Two months after the death, police re-canvassed the area where Luna's body was found and discovered a pocket knife that he had regularly carried. They concluded that Luna had stabbed himself 36 times with his own pocket knife, citing the hesitation runes as a usual occurrence in suicides by stabbing. A pen knife or Swiss army knife is not the type of weapon you would use in a homicide, said a FBI crime profiler. Luna left his office for his home sometime after 6pm, but returned to his office later that evening. At 11.38pm, he left the Baltimore courthouse and went northeast on I-95. He used his easy pass on I-95 into Delaware, but not on the New Jersey and Philadelphia turnpikes. After three toll interchanges, he switched to buying toll tickets. At 12.57am, $200 was withdrawn from Luna's bank account from the ATM at the JFK Plaza Service Center near Newark, Delaware. At 2.47 a.m., he crossed the Delaware River toll bridge to the Pennsylvania Turnpike, and at 3.20 a.m., his debit card was used to buy gas at the Sonico King of Prussia service plaza. At 4.04 a.m., his car exited the Turnpike at the Reading Lancaster Interchange. The toll ticket had a spot of his blood on it, suggesting that he was already injured. His car was parked at the back of the well drilling company before it was later driven into the creek. The FBI official who oversaw the investigation stated, We're certain that there was no evidence to show he was with anybody after he left the courthouse. While the FBI are sure Luna was alone, others have their doubts. He left his glasses that he needed to use for driving on the desk in his office, as well as his cell phone. The pool of blood in the back seat suggests that Luna was in the back and someone else was driving. Perhaps the most intriguing detail that points towards homicide is that authorities found traces of blood from a second person as well as partial fingerprint in the car. However, information on this is lacking. You could argue that the wounds are in places that are self-inflicted, technically, but they could be inflicted by someone who wanted to make him suffer. It looks like a homicide, said the coroner. As the investigation continued, authorities uncovered unusual business trips to Philadelphia by Luna. His father said that his son travelled to the Philadelphia area several times in the month preceding his death, and even cancelled a Thanksgiving trip to New York City, telling his father, I have a case, I have to go to Philadelphia. However, officials revealed that he had no court business in Philadelphia. Luna had as many as 16 credit cards, some of which his wife didn't know about, and at the time of his death, he had $25,000 in credit card debt. He was also scheduled to take a polygraph test concerning $36,000 which disappeared from a bank robbery case that he had prosecuted. Investigators found his name on an internet dating site seeking women for sexual encounters, indicating that he may have been having an affair.
It has been almost 20 years since the death of Jonathan Luna, and the question remains, was the hard-working, well-liked father of two a victim of homicide, or was he the cause of his own demise?